It's like painting with pudding. <laughs> He's, it's, it's Bob Ross. It's going to be a happy little axle, right? Absolutely. There's going to be a happy little bird here. You can't, uh, you guys can't see that. <laughs> here, let me. Wait, I want a tree. Put a tree right there. All right, we're going to show off some painting skills. <laughs> uh, right there. Right there. It is not a mushroom. It is a tree. Yeah. <laughs> is up fellow wrench benders hey long time no see Kagan just got back from vacation as you can tell from this beautiful beautiful tan you freckled you didn't tan I know they all it all goes in the one it's tannish <laughs> he's got a bunch of little tan spots <laughs> and for today talking about changing things colors let's go <laughs> yes I guess that is about right so we are, as you see, there's a lot going on back here. I'm going to do some painting today. So and we wanted to talk about, you know, painting our shop projects because everybody's got, um, you know, you got your shop project and everybody's debate on how they're going to paint stuff. I know what we've done in the past and what's worked well for us, and I was going to share that with everybody else. So uh, we'll go over here. Uh, we've got the plow set up here. And then we've got the axle, right? And then of course I'm working on a little stuff with the motor and I figure I'd do all this at once, kind of touch base on everything. So we'll start with the motor over here. Uh, notice that there is some darkened spots here. I did use a rust converter made by Plastic Coat um, because you know we cleaned it off with, uh, with a steel brush on our uh, tool and it, it got rid of all the loose but I still wanted to get something to kind of protect the rust coating and I painted all of it except for this piece I want to show you guys but we will paint this today now that this is all converted over to a nice hard and uh, and the re it'll look like the rest of the motor and uh, I just got to show everybody I passed over that and man does that look good nice IH on the valve cover that's the original tag right there so and then of course I did take our um, oil cooler off and test it because there's a lot of people who was uh, worried that maybe we damaged our o-rings because uh, that video was interesting to say the least uh, kagan's got me using ratchet ratchet saps more i'll tell you that hey it's a multi-purpose tool you have to be a master of it if so doubt it oh. <laughs> it's because you've never done anything like i'm that. cutting him off yeah. you're, you're talking too much Sorry. The problem with Kagan talking too much, if he gets excited and talk too much, we know what happens and then we have to do another take because he says stuff we can't put on the channel. We could put on the channel. We choose not to. We want to keep our channel to where our children can watch it and we you know, can show it to other family members and that's just who we are. So what I have done here is this is looks like it's painted black. This is actually a rust barrier because... The axle was rusty. If you guys go back in videos, you'll notice that. This piece of channel was rusty. It came off the farm. Uh, it sat outside for who knows how long. Um, you know, I wanted to put a rust barrier on there to kind of encapsulate everything. And, um, and then, then we're gonna use the paint that we'll talk about here in a minute. Something else I got today, which I talked about in a previous video I wanted to show you guys is, this right here is the Eastwood um, internal frame coating. I've used this on a couple projects before. It's pretty cool. Um, you get the uh, can open, and it's just got your standard end on it. But in the package, this right here comes with it. And what this is, is as you can see, it's a tube with a spray nozzle on the end of it. If you go back to the carton here, it shows you how that spray no nozzle sprays, and it creates like this um, kind of a a disperse pattern that disperses everywhere around so you shove it back in there and then you drag it back through um, while you're while you're painting so we'll, we'll show you that um, so I do want to talk about the type of paint we choose to use on a lot of our projects right here is 
go to Tractor Supply or wherever, <coughs> and this this is Rust Oleum, but it is your oil-based implement paint. Now, if you're building a show car or a show truck, you may want a nicer paint. You're probably not going to build all this garbage like what we built with all these welds because they're you know, we're not professional here. We do what we do. Well, but I have what. Well, if you're going to build something and you know for a fact that at some point you do not want a hammer to take the paint off, implement paint. Or a large adjustable wrench. To multi tool. Yeah, the multi tool. So, I have on a lot of projects I've built the teardrop frame, um, the uh, trike kit for a buddy of ours, um, and then the fuel trailer, a lot of other projects, little things I've built, I've always used implement paint. You can choose your color. This being underneath the truck, we're just going to do a low gloss black. That stuff, it takes forever to dry. You can put hardener in it, but I think a lot of the reason it hangs on so well is because it takes forever to dry. And I think it stays wet long enough to get to all the little crevices. And you can't beat it off with a hammer when you're done. Uh, we're going to paint this plow black, even though the the uh, the pivot point and all that, we're actually going to paint a tractor color. I ain't decided yet. Maybe international red, John Deere green. I don't know. We'll pick one. But we're going to paint the blade itself black, and we're going to paint the axle for the international black. It's going to be underneath the axle. It's going to be road grime, salt. You know, we don't know. It's Ohio. Anybody that lives up here, you know how it goes. I want something that's going to hang on there and you know protect it from the elements. So I'm going with the oil-based paint. So, I will uh, get everything set up here, show you how the uh, internal coating works, and we'll maybe do a couple passes of that, and uh, then we'll kind of show you some tips and tricks to painting with the uh, oil base. So, see you in a few. All right, as far as engine paint goes, um, I do like to use engine paint uh, when I paint. Uh, I mean, it's designed to be on there, so it will have the uh, best results with temperature and everything else. Um, the only time I really worry about using some really high temperature stuff is when I'm doing like exhaust uh, headers, manifolds, that kind of stuff. But usually most paints you can find at parts stores, something like that, They're, they have different temperature, temperature ranges labeled on them. Right. And this is designed to be withstands heat up to 500 degrees. This is engine paint. It is actually, this is classified as Ford gray, but these were gray in the 80s. This is international gray that was in the engine block of the uh, truck. So, but it will, uh, the valve covers don't see a whole lot of heat. I've already got everything cleaned and ready for all this. So we'll make a couple passes here, but um, right here, the heads is where you're gonna see the most amount of heat. I don't worry about blocking off the exhaust ports. I, you know, I don't have the manifolds on there yet, but the trust me, the exhaust will be hot enough that any paint in there that might be an issue is going to burn off. So I just want to make sure I get all that covered. And then, um, and also in case you haven't watched the previous video of us tearing this down, the heads on this are uh, not exactly flimsily built. Jeez, oh, Pete, these things are heavy. They're meant to soak up a lot of heat. So, yeah, we're not worried about it. Now, something I try not to do is, is I've actually got my holes here where my injectors go. Um, we're gonna clean those threads, but I'm trying not to add any extra paint down in them holes as far as getting everything. And I've already taped off a lot of my intake manifold gasket. Um, because I don't have the intake manifold on here because we're actually, I'm thinking about painting it a different color, but I've got everything taped off where I'll remove my masking tape after a bit and uh, it should be fine. Um, I'll come back here in just a bit and put another coat on this to make sure I've got all the areas covered. And the only thing that's there that's really not loving the paint is the glow plugs. Yeah, I'm, really as far as them go, you know, I would clean them ends back off if I wanted to. I'm actually going to buy new glow plugs for this motor. They're just in there right now to fill the hole. He um, knows a guy at a parts store, so he'll get a good deal. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to put this motor together and not put new glow plugs in it. I figure that's asking for trouble. They shouldn't be that expensive. Of course, there might be some idea. I've, I've not looked in how much they cost, but might be some idea guys on here. <laughs> Correct me on that. Um, 
But I am going to buy some glow plugs because I'm not going to try and run these old glow plugs. I just, I'm not going to. I'm going to try and put as much new stuff that could cause me problems on here. And the glow plugs is one of those things that if you can't start your truck, that's a problem. It don't so. matter how nice it looks. Yeah. If you can't take it nowhere to show it off, it doesn't matter how nice it looks. But so there, the there people, we are for the first coat, pretty much. And uh, for the people who trailer theirs everywhere, I'm sorry if you were offended by that. <laughs> this is this is not this is going to be the truck that shut that hauls the show equipment. You know, whether it be another car we build or, of course, I say that none of our stuff is really like high show quality. It's more fun to look at and maybe do burnouts on. I can't have anything super nice because then I'd be afraid to play with it. So no, you wouldn't. Well, it wouldn't be super nice very long. I know. Fair enough. Yeah. So, but anyways, as far as engines go, always use engine paint because if you use something that won't handle 500 degrees, it won't last long. Most of you guys already know this stuff, but that's what we use. It's worked well for us in the past. Well, so, Kagan, what has happened to our paint? Well, we're going to show you the strength of implement paint. So, Come here. so first off, I actually, last time we used this, yeah, he's got a screwdriver there. The last time we used this um, was the, yeah, his finger's not wet. It should have paint on it. Last time we used this was the uh, fuel trailer. I used part of this, we've got a half a can there, we put the lid back on it, it didn't seal good. There is a membrane formed on top of the rest of the paint. That's where I stabbed it. That's where he stabbed it. So we're going to uh, take the membrane off of this and mix it good. But yeah, it's just a membrane. It's, it, it actually takes a little bit of effort to poke it. I mean, it's actually impressive. This is why I choose this stuff, because it is super strong. It sets up inside the can like that. So. All right, guys. Got the membrane out of this. He said that was almost a little bit out. I almost said that we're doing a lie. So, one of the best parts about this is, is you can get a little bit on your brush and it'll go a long way. Um, actually, I wasn't even going to worry about painting that. Well, we're painting it. I guess we're painting that. I actually would like to get a different cover. That's kind of my plan. Get one I can use as a... Because see this fill hole right here is kind of plugged off now. I want to get a cover that's got a fill hole and a drain hole. I'm still painting it. Okay. Don't matter, but... I started. Now I'm going to do it. But the good news is, is if you got like a crevice or say like an area here where I just added these pieces of metal uh, yesterday, um, he can add some paint, make it a little thick in those corners and stuff, and it'll eventually set up and it'll coat everything and kind of give it that area of protection. But it'll ooze into areas that maybe you can't get with the brush. Another good thing about um, this paint is, is uh, and more so on the plow right now than this, because I did put a coating on this, is as long as you don't have a bunch of loose rust or anything, um, it's not that bad. You can pretty well paint anything with it. And even if you got a little oil or a little grease on something, I'm not saying you should paint something greasy without trying to degrease it and clean it, but this is an oil-based paint, so it'll still stick. I've not really had too much of a problem. You could touch it with your hands and stuff and not have to worry about it causing fish odds. If you're gonna, if you're gonna paint sheet metal, if you're gonna paint a car, you're obviously not gonna use this stuff. You're gonna use a nice automotive paint. Um, but for stuff like this, I really like the implement paint. And to show you how well it sticks to rust, we'll uh, get a shot here at the, uh, the plow. Okay, so as far as this plow goes, you can see the metal's rough. It's set in the field for 20 years. It's still plenty thick enough. I'm not worried about it. we got to put the cutter bar back on. But uh, I did take a, uh, a grinder with a wire wheel and just clean it. And, um, you know, I didn't really grind anything down. I just took the wire wheel to it. And, of course, you can see where it's got some heat where we welded the backbone on to strengthen the, to strengthen the blade. But, yeah, it's still got a lot of just surface rust because I didn't clean it down to bare metal. And uh, we've painted stuff like this before. Anybody that's been on a farm has painted over rust because you don't clean everything. And the great thing is, is this stuff is, uh, 
you'll start getting it on there and it will stick right to stick to right to rust i don't know if there's anything this implement paint won't stick to but we have used implement paint to paint a lot of stuff over the years whether it's been my projects or dad's projects we've painted gates with it and other stuff we built for tractors or uh, framework for things or anything like that we've used implement paint why because yeah it's going to take it a while to dry and like i said you could put hardener in it and get it to dry faster um but really usually we're not in that big of a hurry with most of the stuff we'll leave it sit for a couple days let it dry good add another coat later and uh and yeah this this right here is going to have gravel and dirt and stuff getting up on it. it's going to wear but this will probably hang on longer than any other type of paint just because of the you know type of paint it is and being oil based so so now i will we'll do this real quick just to show i'll show you what the end does i'm going to aim it towards the axle so that's where the mess goes watch out Kagan. watch out see that that's how it disperses inside the frame so it kind of fogs the entire inside of the frame and coats everything um, i've used this like i said on a couple projects works out real good and i'm gonna set that down here because it's a mess now it does it does get a little messy because it gets all over the tube when you're pulling it out you do more so but that's pretty well it guys that's what we're going to do today i'm trying to scratch my head without getting paint on my hair just accept it just accept it just accept bathe it. in it yeah. be like nic's we'll be wearing more of it on us when it's all said and done yeah yeah so uh if you haven't already uh Please subscribe. We appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video. And uh, hopefully next time we'll do something more interesting than this. Because, uh, you know, we understand. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> and no, we did not plan that. Kagan comes up with that stuff on the spot. So my laugh is not planned. Yeah, if you notice him laughing at stupid stuff I say, it's legitimately because I say it on the spot. And That's the only reason we keep him around he has no idea what's going to come out of my mouth which scares him it yes. really does you know what that might lean towards the name for you what for the intro if you guys haven't yet we're still as far as i know trying to find a name for kegan on the intro so comment below hit us up on social media let us know what to call kegan in the channel intro and yes i will accept any name well they won't i will pg guys come on but uh thanks for watching and uh let us know what projects you guys are working on hit us up on social media send us pictures maybe we'll uh if you guys are close in the ohio area or if we tend to go out anywhere else we would love to meet up with everybody once this whole covid thing irons out we can start doing some events again so once again thanks for watching you guys have a good day